Hello there, my name is Gary Sims and this is Gary Explains. So I've been playing around with my Raspberry Pi 5 to see what kind of performance it gives you compared to the Raspberry Pi 4. I've also been looking at the thermals. Do you need active cooling? Is passive cooling okay? Because obviously now we're running at 2.4 gigahertz, so there's a bit more heat being produced. And I've also looked at some of the overclocking possibilities. Can you crank up that clock speed and will it remain stable? So I've written it all down, I've got it all ready to tell you all about it. And if you'd like to find out more, please let me explain. Okay, so let's dive in. So today we're going to look at the Pi 5, the performance, the thermals and the overclocking. Now, hopefully you've had a chance to look at my Pi 5 launch video that goes into lots of the, about the specification, what changed, what's new, uh, the new uh, custom built chip by Raspberry Pi, for example. Uh, but let's go for a quick overview in case you haven't seen that video. So really, really quick, lightning fast, much better to watch the other video, but you've got two to three times the CPU performance because now we've got the Cortex-A76, which is three micro architectural generations beyond the Cortex-A72 that was in the Raspberry Pi 4. And so the combination of the new core, higher clock speeds, we're now at 2.4 gigahertz up from 1.5 gigahertz, the smaller process node makes the Raspberry Pi 5 faster and more efficient and also the new GPU has been developed there in Cambridge it offers twice the GPU performance and now you've got extra IO capabilities most importantly there's also PCI Express which will mean that M2 SSDs become a possibility and there are various accessories that we're still waiting for from Raspberry Pi for how you can connect things to PCI how you can have an uh, an M2 SSD hat and so on. But that's what the basic overview is. Now, because we've gone up to that 2.4 gigahertz, there are now some active cooling options available. First of all, if you're just buying a case, then it comes with a fan, which is just brilliant. So you can just get the case, which always makes the Raspberry Pi look much nicer. And you also get that fan built into it. If you want your board just as a board, there is this other active cooling uh, solution, which it just clips in here into the board. Now we're gonna be talking about whether you need active cooling in this very video. And quickly, just to mention the prices, $60 for the four gigabyte version, $80 for the eight gigabyte version. The case with the fan is $10, which I think is a very good price. And the active cooling fan, even better, $7. So actually, if you're spending $60 or $80, adding on $7 to $10 for the cooling is not too much of a bad problem. As I said, that case does look really nice. Uh, and of course, it's even got a little on off button on it as well. And don't forget, of course, Euro and uh, British pound prices will differ. Of course, it does differ also where you buy your pie from. Always use, always use authorized resellers. It's the best way to get hold of your Raspberry Pi stuff. Okay, so let's jump into performance. How quick is it really? So I've got my thread test tool. The source code is available on my GitHub repository, which does a basically a prime number searching uh, and sees the kind of performance you get. So here we've got the Raspberry Pi 4, 64 bits. Shorter is better, single threaded core, it takes 0.7 seconds to finish that run. 0.517 seconds for the Raspberry Pi 5. So there you go, you can see instantly there, a great improvement. Uh, compared to the ROC 5B, which of course got an octa-core processor in it, which shouldn't be so much for the single thread, and it isn't because it's 0.54, so slightly slower. And I've also included in here the Surface Pro X, that's Microsoft's Windows on ARM laptop. I've got a review of it here on this channel because it also uses the Cortex-A76 CPU, uh, but of course it's got some other tweaks to do with caching, and clock speed and so on. In fact, the uh, the Microsoft version of the, the CPU is actually even faster. I think up to three gigahertz if memory serves me right. It was a couple of years ago when I did the review. But as you can see, 0.44 seconds. What does it mean for multi-threaded? Well, 3.1 for the Raspberry Pi 4, 1.94. So a big difference there for the Pi 4 to the Pi 5. The ROC 5B, of course, would be even better because it's got its octa-core uh, set up. Uh, and for the Surface Pro X, around about the same speed as the Raspberry Pi 5. And also the memory subsystem has been improved on the Pi 4. You've got faster memory, and of course the Cortex A76 is better at prefetching and it's caching and so on. 
But what does that mean in terms of the thermals? What does that mean with all the those high clock speeds? What are it's going to be the heat that's generated? So I've done some testing. I've got four different types of scenario here for us to look at. The first of all is no cooling whatsoever. Just the board, not in the case, sitting on the top of the desk. Okay, now if you run a single threaded workload for about three or four minutes, it brings it close to 80 degrees. Now why 80 degrees? 80 degrees is this number where the pie will start to throttle. So this is using the internal temperature sensor built into the Pi. Once the CPU gets to that level, it will start to throttle. Now, if you run a single threaded workload, 100% for three or four minutes, it just about reaches it, but doesn't do it. If you run one longer, so five, six, seven, eight, nine minutes, then the Pi will start to throttle. How much is the throttling? Well, 10% on, on a, a single threaded workload. So a single threaded workload will reduce the uh, efficiency by about 10%, the, the performance by about 10%. On a multi-threaded workload, the temperature will spike in less than a minute. So if you're running all four cores, 100%, then it very quickly gets to 80%, and the performance dip is around 50%. So if you are doing heavy stuff um, with your Pi, where all four cores are going to be running at top speed, you're going to see a very significant drop in performance very quickly. Now, you can also put on a passive heat sink, kind of just sticks on there, okay, and that does help, but not very much. So here's another test, for example, using Firefox to watch a 1080p YouTube video, that will cause the Pi 5 to throttle in about four or five minutes. Now, what's the difference here? First of all, it's now using the GPU for the video decoding. It's also using the CPU for doing some of that. Since the CPU is running at about 35% over all four cores, the throttling doesn't actually affect the CPU that much because it's never running at 100%. So I wasn't able to see and actually didn't see very many dropped frames. I even put the statistics for nerds up on YouTube. There weren't very many dropped frames. However, the temperature did go up. Uh, and the throttling flag was set inside of uh, the processor. If you're compiling, for example, if you're compiling a very large project, and I tried this, then once you're compiling using multiple jobs running at once, so you get all four cores running, uh, compiling things, then you will get a dip in performance, and I found that dip to be about 20%. So there's a real case. If you're compiling something like the Linux kernel, for example, then you will see a 20% dip in compiling speed if you don't have uh, if you only just have a passive heatsink, you don't have any active cooling. Now the Raspberry Pi 5 comes with a case and that has a fan built into it. Now you can have a lid on top of that and you can either have the lid on or the lid off. This is with the lid off. Now if you have the lid off, this fixes absolutely everything. The fans are actively managed by the Raspberry Pi firmware. At 60 degrees, the fans will be turned on. At 67.5 degrees, the fan speed will go up. And finally, at 75 degrees, the fans will run at full speed. When the temperature drops below any of those thresholds, the fan also starts to spin down and eventually will stop if that is the conditions. If you have the lid off, then really you're never even going to get to 65 degrees. So using a heavy multi-threaded workload again, like I did earlier on, but now with the fan running, then it, it doesn't even get to 65 degrees. It stays at 65 degrees, no throttling whatsoever. You certainly don't get the highest fan speeds. It just, it's brilliant. It's just all you need is that $10 case and it fixes all of your throttling problems if you leave that lid off. Now, if you put the lid on, then the airflow is less because there's a lid. It has to kind of suck it in through the side gaps there, through the grills in the bottom. Uh, and so a heavy multi-threaded workload will peak at around 75 degrees. That means you don't get your throttling still, no more throttling. So again, the case on with the lid on, you don't have a throttling problem, but the fans will be running louder and they will be running uh, at full speed. Watching a H.264 video using VLC streamed over Wi-Fi from a local server peaks at 68 degrees, meaning the fans are running always. Sometimes they go over that 65 degrees, so it runs it, it runs a bit faster and it goes down again, goes up to 68, runs down and like that. So the fans sometimes run a bit higher, but again, no throttling. So now it becomes a question on, you know, how much fan noise or it's not really very noise because they're quite quiet. But even so, how much fan noise can you can you cope with? And finally, let's look at overclocking. You can change the clock frequency on the Raspberry Pi. You can play with it. So it starts at 2.4 gigahertz. And I've been playing with this. And so I overclocked it to 2.6 gigahertz. 
uh, and I was able to run I, all this. I run all the cores at full load to make sure that it doesn't crash and it runs okay. Uh, and I, it stays at 76 degrees with the lid on. So again, no throttling happens there, but the fans are running at full speed. And then I actually finally managed to get to 2.9 gigahertz under constant load, 75 degrees with the lid off. I was running all four cores at 100% speed and I was watching a YouTube video in 1080p. It was absolutely stable and worked brilliantly, drawing 2.1 amps. So that's brilliant. I did try it at three gigahertz and I started to get some ear, uh, problems. Some artifacts started to appear on the screen. Uh, Firefox would crash from time to time. So there you go. For me, 2.9 gigahertz was working just great. What does that mean in terms of performance? Well, if you look at my thread test tool, here's that 0.517, 1.94. If you up the clock speed by 20%, which is what we're doing, then you get a 24% boost in the single thread uh, score and a 19% boost in the uh, multi-threaded score. So if you don't mind those fans running and if you need that extra boost in performance, then you can certainly overclock your Raspberry Pi 5. Okay, so there you have it, the Raspberry Pi 5, the performance, the thermals and the overclocking. I'd love to hear what you think about it in the comments below. Are you gonna get a Raspberry Pi 5? And if you do, will you get active cooling? Okay, that's it. I'll see you in the next one.